Hello again. Last time I sketched out the initial design for my register file from my 8-bit computer. This time I want to show the implementation on breadboards including my use of a Raspberry Pi Pico for debugging. Let's start with an overview. The top board has the even registers. You can see the four latches and the two drivers, one for the data bus and one for the address bus. I swapped the orientation of the latches and drivers to make the outputs of the latches reach the inputs of the drivers more easily. The bottom board is a mirror image and has the odd registers. The middle board has the decode logic and this board on the edge has the Raspberry Pi Pico. All of the chips so far are the AHC variants. These are still manufactured and cover a good range of common 74 series chips. The blue wires are the data input bus. They connect the inputs of all eight latches together. In this revision of the design, both the even and odd registers share the same data input bus, but I'll be splitting that in the next revision. I've added pull-down resistors on this bus because it'll become dry state, and it's bad practice to allow inputs to float. The grey wires are the two data output buses, one for even over here and one for odd. They're connected through the drivers. The drivers have their data output enable pins connected here in green. These will be driven by the Raspberry Pi Pico. The decoding is done with a pair of 74138s shown here and a 7400 shown here for a bit of glue logic. This is where the register select is connected. All three bits are used by this middle decoder and the outputs are wired to the clocks of the latches. These are shown in the green wires here. As I mentioned last time, only the two most significant bits are used for enabling outputs on the latches as the least significant bit is wired to the data bus drivers. This driver here is always enabled. The 7400 is also used as an inverter for bit 0 of the register light. When bit 0 is low, the even data driver here can be enabled. When it is high, the odd data driver can be enabled. These are connected with some orange wires. With the Raspberry Pi Pico connected, there are a lot more of these DuPont cables everywhere. The first eight GPIOs drive the data input bus here. The next three select the register. There are some for clock and write enable. And then there's data and address enable shown here. I've bridged the ground between the Pico and the main power unit, but not VCC. This is because the Pico is powered by the USB bus whenever the USB is connected. I'm also driving the boards at 3.3 volts because the Pico uses that at its logic levels and I don't have any level shifters. The 74AHC can use 3.3 volts without any issue, or there is a slight drop in performance, which doesn't matter at this stage. This is a monitoring board that I built for my 65816 computer. It's got a 24-bit address display at the top, an 8-bit data display at the bottom, and a bunch of flags. It's still pretty useful for decoding values. At some point, I will either write some monitoring software on the Pico or use some kind of logic debugger that already exists. This data and address buses are connected, so we can see that. As a bonus, I've also connected the top digit of the address to the currently selected register. I'm using MicroPython on the Pico. It's pretty convenient for writing some simple scripts to control things. My program provides a simple abstraction to control the register file. I can select a register, control data and address output enables, and perform a write cycle. First off, let's write some values to registers. So I'm going to select register number 0, I'm going to write hex 1, 2, and nothing is displayed on the board because the data and address outputs are currently disabled. So I will enable the data output and we can see hex12 is displayed, and now I can disable that. I will select register number 1, and then I'm going to write hex value 34. I will just enable the data, and you'll see hex34 is displayed. I will disable that, and now I'm going to enable the address output. And we can see that the address shows register 0 in the lower byte and register 1 in the upper byte and that's correct because we've got uh, register number 1 selected and the lower bit of the register is always ignored when displaying 
an address. So that's the first two registers working. What I'm going to do now is fill all the registers with a value and I'm going to use hex ff so that's all bit set because I did have a problem with one of the breadboards earlier on with a bit of a dodgy connection. So that's filled them all and uh, now I need to make sure that all the values are working correctly so I will use this other command I have in my script which just cycles through all eight registers one by one to show you the values. And it's looking good so far. Yep, so they all have FF stored in them. And then just for completeness, I will also fill some different values per register. So I can also provide a lambda to this function. So I will just put in some different values in each of these. And then I will just play through them. And there we go. It all looks good. Well, that about does it for this one. The first revision is working fine. Next time, I'll have to add the increment and decrement support, process of flags, and program counter. There'll be quite some rewiring to do, especially on the input side. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Please do stick around. Goodbye.